name is Jim Fortiber, and this is my collection of guitars, starting from the ancient times in Mesopotamia and proceeding through to the present day. I had been a horse trainer for many years, and I uh, wanted a hobby that I could have or an interest uh, that could be done at any time of the day or night and finished quickly if the need arises and horses just don't match that description. Most of the guitars are over 100 years old, and I happen to be privileged to have them under my care at the time, but they'll far outlive me and go on to other uh, owners, uh, other institutions perhaps that might want to have them. So I have the privilege of having them for a few decades here. This is a chitara, which came out of Mesopotamia about 4,000 years ago. It's a tortoise shell, and it's stretched with a hide to give it a sound chamber, and then three strings that are used mostly as drone. They cannot be fingered. Up into... Iraq, Iran, and Middle Eastern countries that developed the oud. Oud means wood, the derivation of the wood. So rather than having it covered with a uh, leather table, it's not, the table's now made out of wood, but there are no frets in an oud. When the Arabian culture came into the south part of Europe, they brought their instruments with them. Europeans uh, took the ideas and produced what is called a lute. These are bow-backed instruments, as is the oud, and they're played with tied gut frets. They're called tied frets, and the frets themselves are adjustable. And most of the courses are strings are doubled, so there are two strings for each course. The Ottoman society came to Europe first, they settled in Spain, parts of Portugal, and they were not terribly welcomed, they were considered conquerors by the local inhabitants. So when they brought their oud, the Spanish didn't particularly want to copy their instrument, so they made one that played similarly to a lute, but was not shaped like a lute, shaped more like the older style guitars. These were four, five, and six course instruments. As uh, they got more and more mature from about the 1500s through the 1700s, they acquired a few extra rows and six and occasionally seven courses can be found in Bihuelos. This uh, particular instrument was owned by Emilio Pujol, and he was very instrumental in resurrecting the Vihuela. The lute and the Vihuela are relatively difficult instruments to play, so the more common folk players started playing a simpler instrument called a Baroque guitar. And this was originally used to accompany singing or dancing, that sort of thing. But in time it became very popular with the aristocracy, uh, so fancy and fancier instruments were made, and more and more sophistication was put into the music on the Baroque guitar, from mostly strumming to uh, individual note playing and fingering. That's called a rose. The decoration on the outside is a rosette. Uh, that was decorative, but it also changed the tone somewhat, made it a little deeper, a little fuller sounding, like putting a mute on a trumpet, perhaps. This is one of the oldest guitars in the world. Gennaro Baptista Fabricatori, and one of the very earliest ones. It dates from 1785. The evolution of the six-string guitar took place mostly in Italy and France at about the same time, which is 
1780s. So they started Beautiful. with the Baroque guitars, changing some of the double chorus strings to single courses. So you had chanterelles or uh, bells, like tones on the high string, and they only had one string doing that. And gradually they shifted over to having all of the strings single. That was in the 1770s. So they decided, since they were taking the strings off of a Baroque guitar and only leaving one for each note, that they could just do away with the building a, an instrument for 10 strings and build it for six strings. The French luthiers in Mericourt were getting interested in guitars because they were in much demand. So their approach to the instrument started out more as a violin maker would approach it. This particular instrument it has a carved top. It's not bent in a curve, but actually carved out of a thicker piece of wood. Uh, it has a C-hole similar to viols of the day, and it also has a center hole like guitars of the day. Hmm. They gave them, they <laughs> didn't want to hedge their bets, they put right. them both in there. But it's uh, built like a modern day archtop guitar uh, with a carved face and a carved back. A and D Rudolf were two brothers born in Russia, trained in Paris, and building in London. And they were probably the first or near to it to build an X-brace guitar. This instrument is actually X-brace, similar to what Martin was doing about 30 years later. A harp alarm. It was invented in Paris, France by a man named Solomon who wanted to get more vibration and more sympathetic sounds coming from a guitar so it would sound louder and richer than a typical guitar. The two outer necks are generally not fretted. That is, you don't push down. The frets are more aesthetic than they are functional. And the center neck is tuned with a six-string guitar standard tuning. There are only a very small number of these made because its inventor died uh, about two years after the invention came out. An interesting thing about this guitar is he also invented a box that the guitar was attached to, and the box a acted as an amplifier. Probably the first amplifier for a guitar. Exactly. Oh. 1829.